Hello everyone, my name is Aisha Maramonte and I'm a senior student at McCoy School of Engineering. Uh, my major is Dr. Muhammad El Sharafi. And uh, the project that I worked on was uh, swelling the swelling kinetics for superabdomen polymer by using various brine concentrations. Um, if I move on to the next slide, uh, I'll give you a brief introduction and a brief background of um, why we are doing it, the reason. Um, it is related to petroleum industry. Uh, there are several methods that you can uh, recover oil from a well. Um, people use like primary method, secondary method, likewise. After you are done with the primary methods, after you are getting more oil from the well, uh, they use the secondary method. Uh, there are several methods. There's one method called uh, water injection method. Um, you can see in this picture. Um, this is the reservoir, and you use two different wells. The first well will be the injection well, and this well will be the uh, production well, where you get the oil out from the reservoir. And uh, you have two, two zones, which is a uh, high permeability zone and the low permeability zone. So uh, when you inject water from the injection well, water tries to go from the high permeability zo zone where you had oil in that area, but because of the primary um, recovery, you have already got the oil from that area. We are trying to get oil from the low permeability zone, but um, since, you have inject since you are injecting water from the uh, injection well, since you have high permeability zone, what water flows from this area instead of going to low permeability zone. So the production will be oil and water both together. It will be very costly to separate oil, oil and water uh, after you get in them. So we are trying to block the water that you get from this well, and we are trying to get just oil as a secondary method recovery. So for that, uh, we are using a polymer called superabsorbent polymer. I'll get in a minute about the superabsorbent polymer later in a minute. So um, and um, it is um, it absorbs DNS water. And after it absorbs water, it will become a gel. So just keep that in your head for right for right now. Uh, so when you inject superabsorbent polymer to the high permeability zone, and then when you inject the water from the injection well, the water will be going to the high permeability zone, and later on the superabsorbent polymer will absorb water where you uh, inject from the injection well. And after some time, it will become a gel, and it will block the way that goes. Uh, to this well right here. Then, anyhow, you are still injecting water to the well, therefore water tries to go somewhere and try to get out from the well. So then the water will go to the low permeability zone where we need to put the water into. And because of the pressure that you give from the injection well, the rest of the oil will come out from here and then you will get the oil from the production well. So that is the main reason that we are trying to figure out how this superabsorbent polymer is going to react with various brine concentrations because you're not going to get the same well with same temperature, with same salinity. Uh, it is going to be different. So we are trying to figure out which polymer is the best. I'm working on a different polymer, but you can figure out how that polymer is going to work with the salinity, with the temperature, and uh, with the pH number. So as I said, um, I'm working on the liquid block 40F polymer, which is a superabsorbent po polymer, and which is a co-polymer. It has potassium in it. Um, it goes from zero to 200 mesh size. I'm working on the 35 to 60 mesh size, which is uh, pretty much look like this. It's look, it looks like a um, powder when it's dry, but it looks like a, a gel when it exposed to deionized water, like that. And uh, as I said, this is temperature and pH and salinity sensitive. So um, I'm considering on temperature, pH number, and salinity. Um, so the purpose is to figure out uh, how this polymer is going to react with sodium chloride, with calcium chloride, and with the mixture of sodium chloride and calcium chloride brine concentration according to the weight percentage. So um, my samples. I took from uh, 15 milliliter uh, test tube samples. Based on 15 milliliter, I chose uh, different uh, weight percentages for sodium chloride and for calcium chloride and for the mixture. 
but for the mixture, in the real world, you find a lot of sodium chloride, less calcium chloride. So I chose 90% of the calcium, sodium chloride and 10% of the calcium chloride. And um, so I did swelling, de-swelling, and uh, how it's going to react with the temperature. And the uh, polymer, uh, this is the method um, that I did to do to find out how it's going to swell and how it's going to de-swell and how it's going to react with the temperature. So for the swelling part, uh, first uh, I weighed this uh, polymer, like weight percentage according to the uh, sample tube that I chose. And you put the certain amount of the polymer to the, sam uh, to the test tube and then you put the brine which is uh, mixed with the, the sodium chloride mixed with deionized water or calcium chloride or both. Uh, and then you put the water to the test tube and you mix them real good. And I took data until it stopped swelling. And I did the same way to the de-swelling, but it's a little different. First you put the polymer and then you just put deionized water and let it swell. After that, you had to put um, the either uh, sodium chloride or calcium chloride, and then it starts to de-swell. So I took data until it stops de-swelling. For the temperature, I used a bath heater, which where you can control uh, heat, so that you can get uh, you can change the temperature and get the data based on the temperature. Um, for the experimental purposes, I used uh, different weight percentage samples, as I said. For sodium chloride, I used uh, one to ten percent weight percentages. For calcium, one to four, I'll get into that why it's low percentage, I'll get it later. I'll get into that later. For the mixed brine, I chose from one to 10%, and for the temperature, I went from 30 to 80 Celsius degrees range, because in the underground, we find a little more temp, um, hot in the underground, so. Um, this is the result for the pH reading. Um, you can see in the uh, first uh, table, this is for the sodium chloride, uh, which uh, when it's swelled with, uh, uh, with the polymer. So based on the uh, percentages of the brine concentration weight, the pH reading is going low. And uh, with the calcium chloride, it's going up. Like it is because the calcium chloride is kind of uh, reacting with the polymer because it has potassium. Uh, I'll give you more reasons for that in the, uh, in the future. And this is for both sodium chloride and calcium chloride brand mixture with the pH number. That is also going, the pH number is going up, up when the brand concentration is increasing. So this reading is basically, what you can do with this reading is when you get a sample from a reservoir, before you work on and before you start pr pr the production oil, uh, what you can do, you can just get the pH reading of that sample and see how it's going to match with this data. And based on this data, you can decide how, how much polymer you can use, how, which polymer you can, because the polymer that I'm working is Liquid Block 40F. Some people have worked on different polymers, so they can just compare and see which polymer is the best polymer that they can use for the certain way. So that is the main reason, main purpose of that pH reading. And uh, if I move on to the swelling and de-swelling uh, results of sodium chloride, uh, you can see in this graph, this is the uh, swelling, uh, swelling graph of sodium chloride. The, this one is the 1% and this is the 10% of sodium chloride brine concentration. So when you increase the brine concentration, the swelling will be decreased. You can see this is the, the y-axis for from 15 milliliter. So it is going just up to like 7.8, 7 something like that. So that is for 1% sodium chloride. But if you, if you look at 10% sodium chloride, it is not going above 4.5. So that we can see how the polymer is reacting when the sodium chloride percentage is increasing, the swelling is kind of getting slower. So if you get a more sodium chloride in your well, so you, you had to figure out 
whether this polymer is going to be the best polymer for that well, or you can figure out whether there are some more polymers in the society, in the, I mean, in the environment, so you can pick up which polymer that you can get from out of that. And uh, same with this, this is the deswelling graph. So when you are increasing the uh, sodium percentage, you can see that the swelling, I mean, the deswelling is going down. So more, more the sodium means the polymer is deswelling and going back to normal size of the polymer. So that is the result of the uh, sodium chloride. And this is for the calcium chloride. It is pretty much similar, but you can see little precipitations over here for the calcium. Now I'm coming back to the reason that I chose why uh, from one to four percent, because calcium chloride um, is reacting with the polymer. The polymer has potassium in it. Potassium cations will be reacting with the calcium. So because of that, it is going to be insoluble in water. So that's why I couldn't get more readings when when you, when I put when I. Uh, add more calcium chloride into it, it's going to be insoluble in water, the, uh, the polymer. So I couldn't get any more readings. That's why I had to stop from 4%. Uh, I mean and that's the reason for this precipitation too, because it's the reaction with the calcium and potassium. It is similar to sodium chloride results. When you increase the brine concentration, um, the swelling will be decreasing. And uh, when you're increasing the brine concentration here, the deswelling will be going down fast. So it is pretty much similar to the previous results. And uh, this is the calcium and sodium chloride uh, brine mixture. As I said, um, in the environment, you find uh, like around 90, 90, 92% of sodium chloride and 10, around 10% of calcium chloride in the real world, real world in, in water. So in the brine, so I chose 90% of sodium chloride and 10% of calcium chloride. Based on that, we are getting pretty much similar to sodium chloride graph. Also again, um, when you're increasing sodium chloride percentage, it's, uh, the swelling ratio, the swelling will be going down. And uh, when you are increasing the when you're increasing the sodium, sodium and calcium chloride percentage, the deswelling will be like pretty much going back to normal of the polymer. You can see it's just around 3.2 something. So if you increase more, it will be going back to zero. So based on that, uh, that's based on the swelling and deswelling. And this is the result for the temperature. I, I found the temperature results uh, after doing the swelling. And then I just put uh, all the samples into the, the bath heater. And I chose different temperatures from 30 to 80, from 80 range. Based on that, um, you can see when, you are, when the temperature is increasing, the polymer is trying to deswell. <laughs> this is like, this is the 1% uh, of sodium chloride and this is 10% of sodium chloride. So you can see though the, the the brine, though the brine concentration doesn't matter, but because of the temperature, it's the polymer is deswelling. It's similar in calcium chloride too, but again, it is not that smooth. The curves are not smooth enough, but still, it's giving uh, considerable uh, results. That um, from uh, one percent to four percent, that it's going down. It's deswelling actually. And uh, for the uh, sodium and calcium brine mixture, also giving the same results, but it is not that it is not going that it is not decreasing that much. You can see it's starting from 6.5, and it's not going below 6 uh, point. So that is the real world result because you're getting sodium chloride and calcium chloride together. So this will be considerable, but still, when you're increasing the temperature, it is the swelling like from little amount. And uh, to come up with the conclusion, uh, this is the conclusion. When you are increasing your sodium chloride brine percentage, the swelling will be decreasing and also it will be dissolved more. 
but uh, we didn't, I didn't get the calcium chloride results pretty good. I didn't get good ratings. It's because of the uh, potassium, which is in the polymer, and calcium are reacting because of the cations of the potassium react reaction, and uh, it will be uh, insoluble in water. That's the reason I couldn't get weeds. And um, for the temperature also, when the temp when you are increasing the temperature, it tries to dissolve. And uh, for applications, um, this will help you to uh, decrease the formation, formation damages from, because of the corrosion. Because when you're getting uh, sodium chloride water from a tank, it'll, it'll start to corrode. Because of the corrosion, you will have to do all the rep repairs and everything most of the time. And also, you can cost the, uh, cut the cost because, uh, and you can save the time. Uh, by t uh, separating water and oil after you, are after you get the production. So this will save your time as well. And the polymer is very, it's not that expensive. So you can afford that and, um, for that too. And uh, as I said, when you are going to start your uh, recovery of the oil, what you can do, you can just get a sample and you can take the numbers and see how it's going to match with this polymer and you can get the best out of it. Um, so finally, I'd like to thank Dr. Muhammad El Sharafi for giving me this opportunity and Dr. Magala Rinkan and the Ugro team for supporting us with financially and all the other ways. And uh, Dr. Jane Wachow from uh, chemistry department, he helped me to get the uh, chemical composition of potassium and calcium and also the chemistry department, they helped me to get this done really good. And Macaulay School of Engineering, uh, they supported me to do this and all the other people who have helped me. Uh, thank you. <laughs>